Okay, so in this video we're going to set up an animator controller for the player. In the next series we'll set one up for the chest as well, but we don't need that at the moment. I'm not sure if I mentioned that the player also has to have this tag player. I think he does at this stage. I can't remember. Anyway, just make sure that it's there. Okay, so let's go into models, let's go into characters, right click and create a new animator controller and let's call it player move or whatever you want really. Click on player and we'll add that to the controller there. I'll just pretend you don't have this here so we want an animator controller tab. I don't like the animator controller tab being here because what I like to do is be able to see the animator state machine operate while the player is actually moving around in the world so I put it over here. Just drag and drop. Drag it from there drag it over there but you can have it wherever you want in fact if you've got two monitors you can even drag this off and have it on the other screen which is really cool okay anyway I'm distracted and now I've done something awful alright ah, good just a quick interlude here um, I noticed when I was watching the video again that I didn't go over this pretty important aspect of setting up the character so what you want to do is click on the character, go into idle, oh, go into the character, go into animation, and make sure both of these are checked. So if they're unchecked, what you want to do is check that and check that and apply. Um, this is a quick look at what it's going to do. So now it's working fine. Let me show you when those are not clicked, just so you see why it's important. So let's uncheck that and uncheck that and do that with walk as well uncheck uncheck apply that now have a look it stops and then idle will also stop I think once it's reached its um, the end of its animation yeah he stopped so that's you know in order for the animation to loop you have to make sure that this is that these are clicked and that walk is also clicked so first what we want to do is drag that idle into the scene and automatically that becomes the default state right so if we were to play it now uh, so I just got that idle there and I dragged it in the other way you can do it is go to create state create empty and then click on that and up here in the inspector it will have no motion and then you can scroll down and find the motion that you want and it will be idle so there's two ways you can do it you can drag it from there or you can find it over here either way it doesn't matter let's get rid of that Okay, so now, what's, what that means is that when you start, then this plays. And because this is a, a loopable animation, it will just play forever. So let's see that in action. So you can see it's quite subtle, but I hope you can see that he's moving around. Let's zoom in a little bit. He's just sort of moving around. That's going to go on forever. You can see this is, the animation is complete, and it loops back to the start again. But that's not going to be a very interesting game. We have to be able to move as well. So he's got that. Now let's drag in the walking animation. It's quite annoying in Blender you have this sort of like um, prefix of um, rig. I wish I could get rid of that. I'm not quite sure how. Okay, so right click and make a transition to walk. Right click from walk and then make a transition back to idle. Now we have to create a condition where they transition between the two states. I need to just double check the script to make sure it's speed and rotation. Ah, the rotation I don't use. I mean, you can kind of get rid of that. I sort of want to leave it there for when I do work out how to do rotation. Rotations, quaternions is really one of my major weak spots with programming. It's not something I'm very good at and I find difficult to understand. Uh, I'll get there. Okay, so what we want to do now is create the conditions. Oh, I created a new layer. Get rid of that. Right. So I'm using speed. So let's create a... Why does it... Ah, okay, I'm in layers. That makes sense. Delete that. Go into parameters and create a float. Call it speed with a capital S. Now, this changes when speed is greater than zero. It doesn't have an exit time. If you leave it to exit time, then even if speed is greater to zero, greater than zero, 
it waits until the idle animation is finished before it transitions, so we don't want that to happen. As soon as speed is greater than zero, we want it to transition into walk. Now to go back into idle again, what we want to happen is again, we don't want this has exit time. Get rid of that. I think I unchecked it there as well. No, I just talked about it. Okay, so we don't want has exit time in either of these cases because that will make it look weird. Now we need to add a condition again speed, but this time we want speed when it's less than one. Okay, so when speed is less than one, it will go to idle. When speed is greater than zero, it will go to walk. And that's how we're going to loop between the two. Now the thing that changes the value of speed is when you right click and then when they stop. When he reaches the end of the path, speed is set back to zero, so he goes to idle. When you right click, speed is set to three, so he goes to walk. There are other ways you could have done this, but that's how I did it, so and it, and it works. It doesn't really matter. So now he's at idle, we right click, and he's walking, and now he's reached the end of the path, so it's set to zero, and now he's in idle again. He'll keep looping like that until we click. Now just for demonstration purposes, let me show you what this does, because this is very easy to do. Because this is on by default, uh, people can miss it and wonder why their animations are weird. So let's click that on. This will be quite a boring demonstration, but it kind of needs to be done just to hammer the point home. So I'm clicking, but no, he's moving because the script is making him move. But uh, he's not transitioning to walk. And he probably never will, because by the time he's reached to the end of the path, uh, walk the speed has been set to zero again, so it's just not going to work at all. Oh, that just luckily, just I think I probably just got it in time that time. Um, there may be a better example would be to leave that one and then do it with that one. Okay, so we're, we're leaving this to has exit time. So he's going to get to walk. See, he keeps walking and then he stops, but we don't want that to happen, right? So I kind of like went over that because I've been stuck with some bugs in my game before and I wonder what was going on and it's because I left this unchecked. It's very easy to do. Right, that's the mechanism system for the guy. Very s basic. This is probably as basic as a mechanism system can get. If you get any strange behaviors like um, there's snapping, let me show you what, what that could be caused by. Okay, so what I did is I went into this transition here and I clicked that to be nothing basically. Now it might snap between the two without any transition law. No, not really. What if I do it there as well? Is any kind of snapping going to occur? Oh, yeah, see that snap there? It goes, whoop, we really don't want that to happen. And the reason why that's happening is this here is kind of a blending thing. What it does is it blends, whoop, don't want to go too far. It blends between the two animations. So when one ends and the other begins, it doesn't just abruptly stop like we saw before, but it smoothly transitions between the two. So if you ever have any weird abrupt behavior, this is the first place to check to see if that's, um, if that's correct or not, if that blending is okay. See, now the snapping stopped, and it's just sort of done this little blend between the two. I mean, the blend isn't perfect. As I mentioned in one of the earlier videos, what would be ideal is that if at a certain point when it was really close to reaching the end of the path you had an actual animation which was a sort of designated move to idle animation and so then you wouldn't get this weird little kind of shuffly stomp thing that he does at the end which looks kind of strange but I can't afford to be too perfectionistic at this stage you know so this is good enough. I think if you've done everything so far, you should have this behavior. If not, let me know in the comments and I'll do some kind of add-on video. The next thing I'm going to make is um, an explanation of the code. Okay, thanks guys.